Hey guys, good morning. Um, I'm tired. I didn't sleep much, um, but just wanted to hop on here and ramble a little bit. I haven't even thought really about what I'm going to say, um, but I think, oh, okay. Well, first of all, let me say this. Like, if Donald Trump wins the presidency because he has enough votes, then that's democracy and we need to be, we need to stand back and stand by i'm just kidding we at least need to just be like okay well america has spoken and and i for one am not gonna have a fit if he wins um because at least i mean we know what we're getting um i think what is scary is um i was i was part of like ministries that would talk a lot about like the end times and things like that and they would use um uh the second world war as um they would call it like a practice test or like a um you know a dress rehearsal for uh this coming antichrist regime or whatever and um i <clears throat> back then I, I, re I watched a lot of documentaries about hitler and about um the um second world war um and all of you know that i'm i'm a big history nerd so let me say this as well like a lot of my um concern has to do with um being very um vividly connected to history and knowing how ideologies become way more than what we think they are and so um what happened in Germany was there was a lot of personal and economic despair that people were really upset about. And so when Adolf first came to power, he said a couple of things that were problematic, but he wasn't really um, out there, out there. Yeah, so he wasn't, he wasn't cray cray. I mean, it, it, he was, it, it was very similar to, um, the la the 2016 election where a lot of people were like these are the choices <laughs> so um i think ooh, i'm trying to help people understand how this is not partisan in politics and i and i get it and i get how the church is saying things like oh the church is so divided and we need to to be unified and things like that and What's important for for me is like this is not a difference of opinion. It's like we've had healthy debates. There have there have been people who have had healthy debate in the church um since the beginning of the church, you know. I mean Peter and Paul wasn't even rocking like that. Bar Barnabas and Paul weren't rocking like that. And so I think there's plenty of room for um disagreement um differing problem solving ideas there's certainly room for that in the body um but i just don't want people to conflate that with why i'll speak for myself why i am so at a place where i feel like i i can't trust um it doesn't mean love it doesn't mean being cordial it just means like i really I can't trust you. And I think a lot of it has to do with <laughs> what I've learned uh, about the past. So here's the thing. It's like, I'm about to nerd out. So I hope y'all are all right with that. But like, so again, economic and personal despair is what created the vacuum that Hitler filled. And it came because after the First World War, uh, the Treaty of Versailles told them that, like, hey, you got to pay reparations, you got to give some land back, like, so Germany ended up having to pay a ton of money, and they were really, really, like, upset about that, and so they were upset about the way that these um, foreign powers, something like the Paris Accords, like, these foreign powers were saying what they needed to do, and so they were very, very bitter about that, and, and um, Hitler 
understood that and spoke spoke into that so in the beginning it was just a bunch of people who were mad and wanted a change right so they wanted to kind of drain the swamp and so the, the, really they were just like being told that they had to take responsibility for their actions right and so um i just think it's so interesting how similar it is but so the at the time he thought hitler thought that the leadership the parliament in Germany was ineffective and inefficient and that they needed a new type of leader. So it's like, if you were to, it's it's kind of like when all of these like celebrities and stuff started running for president here in America, it's kind of similar. Like the, people are disillusioned with this system and we need a new type of leader or whatever. Um, but what happened is like, they began to blame the nation's troubles on um, Jewish people. There were Jewish people that were um, like communists. There were Jewish people. I mean, Karl Marx was a, a German Jew. Like, so there were these other ideologies that were beginning to take root. Because again, you've got a nation of people who are very disillusioned. And so of course people go and they try to figure out life. I mean, that that's normal, right? But there was communism, there was Marxism, and there was worldliness get this right so he was um he he considered himself a christian he he practiced what he called um positive christianity <laughs> and so what that meant um i know this is crazy y'all but what what positive christianity was was like they mixed the um aryan ideology with like you know protestantism and what you got was like what they call uh, positive christianity and I think that that's very similar to what we see in America, because in a lot of ways, American evangelicalism has been mixed with white supremacy. And there's tons of history about that. Um, so, yeah, so like, <laughs> so it wasn't that he was like irreligious. He definitely um, believed certain things that the Protestants believed. And that was hard for them to, they, he didn't come out as a dictator. That's the point I'm trying to make. It was these subtle sort of, um, these sort of these subtle moves toward craziness that it was like, well, the phrase everybody loves, the slippery slope. Like once they got to this certain point, there was no going back. And I feel like that's the part where, like, I think about America's history. It's not German and Jew so much, but it is black and white. And, and black people and Jewish people have similar histories. Um... And so it's kind of like I'm looking at this and I'm thinking who the the most hated group um, in America at its founding were black people, black skin, black people were not human. They were inconsequential. They were um, enemies. They were rapists. They were um, inferior. All of these things um, in the founding of our nation until finally you know, uh, in the 1950s, um, so again, not that long ago, it, black people in the church started to stand up and say, no, like, we're not going to do this. And there was this subversive, like, institution called the black church that really resisted all of that, loved Jesus, but resisted all of that. And that's very similar to like, what Bonhoeffer did in Hitler. Now, I mean, I'm sorry, in Germany, but Bonhoeffer got his, like, gumption for resistance from black uh black believers in harlem so there's so much connection here i know i'm nerding out um but there's a lot of connection here and so when i see like um you know germany like you know the culture is going to hell in a handbasket like they were they were mad about like swing music and like dancing and like <laughs> science um they didn't believe in like psychoanalysis and psychology and stuff like that so they they were um just trying to protect they were trying to protect germany from liberals communists marxists and then they blamed those people for their plight and so when hitler rises to power professes that he's a christian and speaks to the gut of people who are very disillusioned. Um, that's how you create a recipe for totalitarianism. And that's what I'm trying to 
to say to people that like, imagine, now hear all of that, right? Hear all of that. Hear how no one is in, no one is confused about that scenario and how wicked, but people are confused about how it snowballed <laughs> and, and how the church was so on board with Hitler in the beginning. And I think, okay, so when you tell me that me not trusting a person who voted for um, Trump, it's like, I need you to understand that that's going through my mind. And the fact that like, because of it, because America's undesirables are black people, uh, um, American ideals were built on anti-blackness. And so I'm black, okay? <laughs> so when you when you say that, that you have like good reasons, I say, well, so did they. And I don't think that anybody would have, if Hitler had shown his true colors, like I don't think anybody would have really placed him in parliament. But what happened was they didn't peep game. They didn't listen to people. And by the time it really mattered, it was too late. And the other thing is that like Hitler really did not, I mean, it was kind of like he was a crazy man and, and mouthed off and he was very effective speaker and all those things. But like the Holocaust was started by one of his homeboys. And that's another thing that you have to understand is like Hitler placed Heinrich Himmler in power. And so that meant that he was kicking it with people who were going to eventually exterminate Jewish people in gas chambers. So you have to understand that when he can't condemn white supremacy, when David Duke and Steve Bannon are his homeboys, when you see all of the corruption around Russia and the fact that, that there was clearly some sort of deal trying to be made, we see that Russia got involved in our election and you see all of these things and, and but it doesn't matter, like Putin's a good guy. And he's a he's an effective leader. You have to understand that if it is reasonable enough for you to see all of that and vote for him and tell your friends, like, I know it's not ideal, but like I'm gonna do this because you know, I really care about I don't know, pro-life or whatever your Christian ideals are, then it's also okay to vote against it. And that's what I'm saying. Like, at what point does it become like, are y'all that afraid of Joe Biden? Like, are y'all, do y'all really? <laughs> We've had four years to see what this person is capable of, of saying, of doing. And for some reason, there are still like, you still think that policy? Uh, so uh, on the one hand, everybody's like, well, you know, it's, you know, Jesus is king. <laughs> I get that. Well, if Jesus is king and this man is saying these types of things, then you, then I really don't understand the decision. <laughs> because if Jesus is king and this man is saying things that are crazy and, you know, at this point, it's just dollars for me. It's dollars versus decency, um, because I think it, the, the black people who who love Trump um, can love Trump. It's fine, and a lot of it has to do with the tax breaks. And some people like the platinum plan, plan um, and it's fine. It's just that those policies are not enough to to redact all of these other things, and. The problem is that like y'all don't think he really can do this stuff, but I know because I've heard stories from two generations. Like I, right now, I could go have lunch with my grandmother and hear stories about domestic terrorism because of the color of her skin, and so you guys have to understand that like this is not partisan. It's really not, and like. For all of that talk that that we did in the past, I mean, some people didn't do that in their churches, but in my old church, we did. We talked about the end times a lot. And so 
to think that those are the same people who voted for this and still feel like they have reasons to. Hitler was not crazy. There was death. He was he had some Protestant beliefs. There were even people in the confessing church that Bonhoeffer was in that that agreed with some of the things that were with, within the Nazi party. They agreed in Protestantism. They believed the same things. But at some point, we can't, we, we, we can't, at some point, like, it has to be enough. So then I'm thinking, okay, the questions for me is, because whether people believe me or not, I do try to give the benefit of the doubt. And I really don't mind disagreeing with people um, politically, but I just don't think that's the moment. And that's what's upsetting to me. Like, that's, political disagreement is not the moment we're in. So either people are saying that to anesthetize the the impact of what they're doing, or they really don't know history. Um, Cause I really, and I'm happy to have people even in the comments um, speak to me. If this was a different moment, then I could see the whole like, well, Biden's no better. I get that, but Biden hasn't done anything close to this like anything close and the crime bill i get that which made the clintons trifling but the crime bill during the crack epidemic like nobody knew what to do it was a crazy town again that's like learning some history like you it was people needed to go to jail <laughs> they needed to figure something out right but then to come now and go in hindsight like well i made a mistake you know you can do things that are wrong or not right or like uh, not the best course of action. And God forbid we ever get to a place where you can't make a mistake and apologize for it. That's why I don't like cancel culture. I mean, it's it's antithetical to the core of who I am as a Christian because I should be canceled. <laughs> so like and I'm just I'm not canceled. So I, I, it's not about that. It's just about like. We, how much, how loud am I going to have to scream? How much am I going to have to plead? Because I'm telling you that my skin color could have gotten me killed in the lifetime of your grandma. And so when I hear this rhetoric, when I see these militias, when I see the hate, when I see the blame being placed on everybody and, and the, the economic plight and the personal despair being blamed on groups of people, when I, when I see that, you know, anyone that's saying a Black Life Matters is being equated with um, dangerous rioters violent antifa people and the fact that like yo these characterizations happened when hitler came to power so that was long and if if he if he wins then we know i mean you know robert and i talked about yesterday like we know we're getting into so it's not it's not about that it's just more about I need people to really think about what they're doing. Like, I don't think people really realize what they're doing because their history is not tethered to the terrorism that took place in this country. And for some reason, these people think America was great at some point <laughs> and they wanna get back there, but America was only great for certain people. So like, for the rest of the people in America, America was Babylon. America was dangerous. And that's what I want y'all to think about. <laughs>